So the world we have created is the Sanayatana, the six sensual realms. <clears throat> and once we have seen the six sensual realms, we have what is called sense experience. That is the sense experience we are having. So up to that point is the cognitive process. That is what is called cognition. And that is what we call becoming conscious. We have become conscious of a world. That is the real consciousness at that point. Up to that point, it was just perception. So when the perception process is completed, we are supposed to be conscious. And we are conscious of a world. That is all. Still we are not conscious of a self. We are only conscious of a world outside. We have not become conscious of a self. Now from here onwards, we are going to talk about how we become conscious of a self. For that we start with the sensation. So there is, when we are conscious, we also feel the sensation. And that sensation is of three kinds, a pleasant, unpleasant and neutral. So that feeling results in a reaction to the feeling in the form of a desire for the pleasant feeling, a hatred for the unpleasant feeling and the neutral feeling doesn't be make us a desire or hate, but we feel the existence of something there. So the feeling of existence is there. The feeling of being. So that emotional arousal <coughs> that Desire for the feeling, the pleasant feeling, is what is called Kama Tanha. The Kama Tanha is the desire for the pleasant feeling. And the hatred of the unpleasant feeling is there. And the neutral feeling makes us think of existence. So there is a desire for the existence. That desire for existence is the bhavatanna. And the desire for the non-existence of the unpleasant feeling. <coughs> so that also in the form of a desire, the desire for the non-existence of the unpleasant feeling, that is vibhavatanna. So bhava means existence or being. Now with this comes another important thing. We are able to distinguish between <clears throat> subjective and objective because the desire is seen as something coming from within that is subjective and what we desire is some object outside. So the desire is personalized as mind 
and the object is alienated as something outside, other. What is mine and what is not mine? What is not mine is the object, what is mine is the subject. And the subject is personalized. To say personalized means we say it is mine. To personalize is to say it is mine. So with the personalization comes what is called the personality. What we have personalized becomes the personality, and the personality is myself. The <laughs> self is simply what I have personalized. So what I have personalized becomes myself. Did you understand that? So once the personality has come into being. I exist. What do I mean by I exist? I exist in space and time. What do I mean by existing space? I am occupying space a certain amount of space which can be measured in terms of length, breadth and height. What is it that occupies that space? It is the body. So the body has become myself which occupies space. So the body has become myself that occupies space. And not only that, it is also occupying time. If it is occupying time, that means it has a past, a present and a future. How do I know about a past, present and future? How do I know that there is a thing called past? Because of the memory. I have a thing called memory. It is the memory that is producing what I call the past. How do I know about the future? Future is something that has not even come. But still I think of a future. That is all in my imagination. Imagination is creating the future. Memory is creating the past. But the past, is it existing? Past is not something that exists, it has gone finished. How can it be existing? And the future has not even come. But still we are thinking of a past, present and future and we are existing in the past, present and future. And when we begin to think of the past, the past begins with birth. And where is the birth? What am I talking about when I speak about birth? I am only talking about the body. So the body has become myself. If the body is myself, then the birth of the body is my birth. How did the body become myself? By personalizing. I personalize the body and call it myself. If I didn't personalize the body, <clears throat> then the body is not myself. Because I personalize the body, the body has become myself. So the birth of the body has become my birth. And then when I talk about the future, 
the future ends in death. So the death of the body is the death of myself. Because the body has become myself, then the death of the body is myself. That is the death of myself. If the body was not myself, then the death of the body is not my death. And in between that birth and death, there is what is called aging. So the aging is again seen as the aging of myself because it is the aging of the body. Because I have called my body myself, so the aging of the body is my aging. So if I didn't personalize the body, what will happen? If I didn't personalize the body, I will have no birth, there will be no aging. <laughs> there will be no death. <clears throat> that is the immortality which is called nirvana. Nirvana is called amata. Amata means deathlessness or immortality. So if you can really understand this properly and <coughs> understand it fully, then all your suffering comes to an end. All the suffering comes from the idea of a self that doesn't really exist. You see? But why is it that now when you begin to understand this, you can see that that is true. But still, although you have seen it, you are still thinking, I am here. <laughs> Why is this? Because the idea of self is not an intellectual thing. The idea of self is coming from that emotion. It is the emotion that started the personalizing and the personalizing led to the idea of self. It's all an emotional thing. And therefore, if we want to get rid of this suffering, we have to get rid of the emotion. It is only when the emotions are removed that all suffering comes to an end. And this emotion is what the Buddha called loba, dosa and moha. That same tanha, the tanha was that emotional reaction which we called uh, kama tanha, bhava tanha and vibhava tanha. It is that same thing that the Buddha called loba, dosa and moha. Loba is the desire for pleasure. Dosa is the hatred of pain, moha is the thought I am. So it is only by removing those three things, loba, dosa and moha, that all suffering comes to an end. Just by understanding it intellectually, this problem is not solved. Intellectual understanding is not enough. That emotional uh, removal of the emotions is the important thing. That's the important thing. So this is why we have to practice what is called the Noble Eightfold Path. The Noble Eightfold Path begins with right understanding first 
first we have to intellectually understand that is the beginning once we have intellectually understood the next step is samma sankap what is samma sankap sankap simply means the mental image samma sankap sam mental image what is the mental image we are having an image of our self in the mind that is called the self image the psychologists are aware of this thing called the self image we are having in our mind the self image and this self image is also based on emotion so we have to uh change the self image and that is we have to understand that this self image is an emotional image that we are having but there is also image that we want to be we also have an image of what we want to be and we try to act like that so we 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 are thinking say when you are going into society or presence of other people you try to behave in a different way when you are alone you are thinking of yourself in one way but when you are going to meet other people you begin to behave in another way and not only that when you are going to work in your office you have one image when you come home you have another image <clears throat> and you are acting out all those images so you are also actors <laughs> also <laughs> 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 yeah. so you see it's very important to understand that all these images we carry at different times not the real image and even the image is only an image that's not the real you so we have to understand this gradually and become aware of these things we have to become aware of our images and think that we are only creating images in the mind this is only an image it is only by seeing the image as an image that we can get rid of the image and also when we are angry we have one image when, when we are good we have another image you see every time our emotions change our image also changes so that is also important to understand so we must always at the beginning carry uh, uh, get rid of the bad images we have and cultivate the good images till we ultimately give up all the images first we give up the bad images we have <clears throat> and then we begin to cultivate good images so we have to give up angry images we have to give up greedy images and uh, images like harming and hurting other people all those every action that we do carries a different image so we have to be aware of these different images and always substitute a good image instead of a bad image and it is by holding on to good images that is what we call meditation so meditation itself 
he is carrying good images in the mind. So the more we think of good images like thinking of the Buddha, thinking of the Dhamma, thinking of the followers of the Buddha, the Arahants, and all the early followers of the Buddha, we begin to think of a Buddhist, becoming a real Buddhist, is this, this is the kind of person I should want to become. So we have the what we are and what we want to be. So what we want to be is the good image and what we are may be the bad image. So we have to get rid of the bad images and we cultivate good images. So when we begin to do that, we'll be speaking in the good way We'll be acting in the good way and we'll be living in the good way. So once we have come to that point, we have passed five steps in the Noble Eightfold Path. The Sublime Eightfold Way. And the next step is the Harmonious practice. Practice means we have to keep on purifying the mind. And that is Sangvara Pahana Bhavana Anurakkhan. That means we are guarding the senses and taking our attention away from memories and focusing our attention on uh, what is going on inside us. These are things that we discussed earlier, so I don't have to go into detailed explanations. And then we begin to practice what are called the bojangas, the, the seven steps in the process of awakening. And by practicing the seven steps, gradually we enter the purity of mind, which is the real samadhi, the satipatthana or uh, introversion of attention. All these things come and uh, so ultimately all suffering comes to an end by following the Noble Eightfold Path or the Sublime Eightfold Way. So I think that is enough for the day.